first slide up, please. Okay, um, me. The, uh, this, this is not only a water problem, it's also a, there are also sorts of levels of sustainability issues with uh, current meat production. Uh, one is that we're not going to produce sufficient amounts to uh, meet the demand that is going to increase and going to double in the next uh, 30, 40 years. Um, second is that, um, Okay, we live in an area with a big river that floods every uh, three or four years, so we don't ha really have a freshwater issue in, uh, in our uh, city. So <clears throat> cows and pigs, we are, which are the biggest sort of producers of our meat, are very inefficient animals. They bioconvert about 15% um, of all the vegetable proteins that they eat, with the, with the water including. Um, and because of their inefficiency, um, to, in order to feed us all, um, uh, we are already using 70% of all our agricultural lands to produce all the meat that we are eating. And again, in 2050, the um, consumption is going to double, mostly because of uh, increasing uh, wealth. <coughs> Um, in addition, of course, the, um, what we all now know right now is that there are a lot of greenhouse gas emission from uh, cows and pigs. The Romanologists among you will find this an incorrect picture. They, f they actually don't fart methane, they, they belch methane, but it comes out anyway. Um, so, um, the, um, and, and we are using about 5,000 liters of water per kilogram of beef which is sort of a staggering amount. Um, and it's uh, indeed for beef, it's the most for sheep and pork um, and poultry, it's uh, a little bit less, but beef is actually the, uh, the biggest. Um, and it comes from a variety of, uh, of sources, um, uh, mostly um, through uh, evaporation, through, of course, uh, uh, it, it bulks up the meat also. Meat contains uh, quite a bit of water. Um, and, uh, but there's also, of course, recycling and a lot of uh, waste. Now, if you um, rethink about how you can grow meat, uh, we have technologies based in the, in the medical field that enable us to grow meat just outside of the body. We take stem cells, um, we can let them uh, multiply, and they sort of differentiate into uh, muscle cells again. And this way we can create meat from a tiny amount of uh, stem cells. We can do that in a test tube, we can do that in a petri dish, in a, in a bioreactor. Um, and with that we can control the environment and we can uh, recycle um, so that we eventually can reduce the um, uh, water uh, consumption. Now, when you think about water, um, this is sort of a, a high school picture of the, the recycling of water. And of course, here is where the cow comes in um, and um, uh, drops a lot of waste, uh, which flows back into the river. So when you think about water, you really think about fresh, purified water, which is uh, a majority of the problem, because as the chairman already said, you know, we have salt water enough on the planet. So, um, this is the, uh, the technology. We take stem cells out of a muscle, uh, let them uh, uh, multiply. Um, then we, of course, need to feed them. They're also submerged in a watery environment, so we cannot get rid of the water system entirely. Um, and they will develop into tissue, which is basically not a replacement of meat. It is meat as we know it. It's exactly the, the same, just grown outside of the body. Um, and if, of course, through multiplication from a single cell, you can make, uh, theoretically, if you get 51 doublings, um, you can get a couple of tons of uh, meat. So you can use this system to feed the uh, population. Um, the cells need to be fed. They need to be fed sugars and proteins and uh, fatty acids, which gives a number of other opportunities to create maybe even healthier meat with more um, polyunsaturated fatty acids. But we still need to feed them. So one of the ways that we um, envision doing that is by feeding them algae extracts. And we have done a number of experiments uh, using algae extracts, salt water algae. Um, so they basically use the whole bulk of salt water that we have available. Salt water algae take extracts from that. They convert, of course, uh, uh, sunlight and CO2 into sugars and, and proteins if you add a little bit of nitrogen. And you can use that algae soup to uh, feed those cells. 
in a um, in a in a closed system. So of course, um, you know, the muscle must work before it sort of beefs up. And fortunately, the cells do that more or less by themselves. Um, if you put them in a gel in between two anchor points, those are the black wires there, it's actually silk wire. Um, after 24 hours, they have developed a stretch of tissue in between those wires and they develop tension. And with that tension, they build up um, uh, muscle. Uh, it's alive, it contracts. Uh, we can also electrically stimulate it to build even more uh, muscle. Of course, that also takes a lot of energy, so we try to steer away from that. We're developing methods now to uh, make that more efficient. Um, and then eventually we get these strips of uh, muscle tissue in uh, uh, petri dishes. This is still in a linear shape. We are now actually building them in donuts so that it's easier to automate it. Of course, muscle doesn't only, or meat doesn't only contain muscle, it also contains uh, fat and bone and uh, maybe even uh, bone marrow. Um, and that can also be made. The, those technologies have in the medical field already been described. You can easily make those uh, type of uh, tissues. Now, what would that um, result in, in terms of um, a reduction of land, water, and energy? And as you can see, this is based on combining that algae technology with the muscle uh, uh, technology. You can um, uh, achieve a tremendous reduction in the amount of land that you need for the uh, growing meat, about 90% reduction, um, a 96% reduction in uh, water, and also a 70% um, uh, reduction in energy. So if you could make this a closed system uh, where you have all the variables under control and you combine, for instance, algae technology with um, uh, growth of muscle in uh, a petri dish, you can achieve these um, uh, reductions. This is an artist's rendition of how a plant would look like with uh, an algae producing part, with a muscle producing part, with some proteins that you need to produce in order to get uh, the muscle uh, growing, and then it eventually um, comes out of the factory. You can place this anywhere, and the first place I would put it is in the algae dead zone of the Mississippi in the Gulf of Mexico, where there are so many algae that nothing else can grow, and you can harvest those algae to feed to, your, to your cells. Um, and this is, of course, the, uh, the issue. Um, if you have this, this information, um, we have, let's say, in 30, 40 years from now, we have a product made in the lab or in a factory, and it's, it's very similar, or if not the same, as the animal-grown uh, product that now has an ecotex and is four times as expensive and has also a little label that animals have suffered for this uh, product. So the, the question now again is, you know, who would want to eat this? Who would choose for the lab meat? Can I have hands up again? There were already many people who would... Oh, there are less now. That's bad. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, well, I'll have to do a better job next time. <laughs> well, thanks anyway for your attention. <laughs>